Good morning, rock stars, and welcome to our very first day of the 12 days of FMQ FAQ. My name is Holly Ann Knight of String and Story, and it is my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. And that includes spending time together during this month of August 2022, making sure your key questions about free motion quilting are answered. If you don't already know, my signature online course is Free Motion Quilting Academy. This is a 12-week course designed to guide you from being a nervous beginner free motion quilter to a confident intermediate free motion quilter. And our 10th cohort is going to be enrolling at the end of August. And in anticipation of that, I want you to already be feeling confident about many of the frequently asked questions that surround the subject of free motion quilting. So thank you so much for joining me this morning. Um, if you are here with me live or catching me on the replay, please say hello in the chat. Let me know where you are tuning in from. My rock stars who have been here for a while, um, you may remember I shared last week that I was going out of town this weekend. I um, had a wonderful weekend in Seattle. I took the red eye home last night. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend that at all. All right. Okie dokie. Now, as y'all are logging on, as I mentioned, we are going to be talking today um, about your what machine you need for free motion quilting. This is a question I get asked all the time. It is often one of the first one, two, or three questions that folks have when they're thinking about learning how to finish their own quilts. They actually wanna be able to do that quilting process themselves. And um, it is very common for them to say, but what machine do I need? Don't I need a big machine? Can I work on the machine that I have? What do I need to do? And today we're gonna break all of that down. In the caption of this video, you will see a couple of things. The first thing you're gonna see is just a little synopsis of the topic that we are covering today. Below that, you're gonna see a link over to the String and Story blog. Today it is stringandstory.com forward slash blog forward slash sewing machine for FMQ. And that blog is gonna actually have all the things uh, that I go through during our live time together written out for you. It's actually another video embedded in there as well. It's probably a little bit longer than this one's going to be. Uh, I probably was a little bit more chatty on that one. I'm gonna try to keep these punchy and focused this week so that they can be concentrated in giving the information that you need, all right? Then finally, down below that, you're gonna see one more link, and that is a sign-up link for the totally free quilting plan challenge that is coming up in two weeks. And that quilting plan challenge is a five-day free event that answers the question, what the heck do I quilt where? How do I decide how to actually quilt my quilt? So the goal of the next two weeks is I really wanna take you through some of those commonly asked questions around things like machine and supplies and tension and basting that are kind of the nuts and bolts of getting started with free motion quilting. And then we're gonna start talking about, okay, well, if I'm gonna actually do this free motion quilting thing, how do I decide what to put where on my quilt, all right? Good morning, Helen, I'm thrilled that you're joining us. If you are tuning in live, do please say hi in the chat. I would love to see you. And if you're on the replay, make sure that you weigh in as well. Um, I would love to be able to answer any questions you have as we go along, all right? Okay, let's start uh, with the, the basic level of this. What machine do you need for free motion quilting? In all likelihood, you need the machine that you already own. I think one of the big roadblocks to folks finishing their own quilts is this concept that you need to buy a bigger or fancier machine, that it needs to have a larger throat space or that you need a long arm. Um, and that space and or a financial barrier immediately begins to shut down the idea of actually doing this yourself. And you absolutely can finish your own quilts, all right? Here are the things that are not important when it comes to the machine you're going to learn free motion quilting on, okay? Brand is not important. Throat space is not important. Fancy settings are not important, okay? Um, I started learning how to free motion quilt on a tiny little Kenmore sewing machine that was probably bought for like 97 bucks off the Costco shelf. I actually got it secondhand from a friend. Uh, from there, I upgraded to a Singer that I bought off of Amazon. From there, I switched to a Juki, and now I sew on a Bernina, right? I've sewed on a lot of different... Oh, I had ever sewn in there for a little while. What else have I had? I have a different Singer as well, right? And I have students that are on everything from Singer featherweights to big old long arms, okay? So brand and size are not what's important when it comes to choosing a machine for free motion quilting. Um, I see a couple of y'all who are here in the chat are actually um, either students and or graduates from Free Motion Quilting Academy. And out of curiosity, I would love to know what you free motion quilt on, because I suspect we'll get quite a bit of variety represented even here now, all right? What is important 
when it comes to a machine for free motion quilting. Um, the biggest thing is that it's the machine all you, you already have, if at all possible, right? I want to break down these barriers between you and this dream of finishing your own quilts, between you and this idea that finishing your own quilts is in fact achievable because it is. Um, and I have thousands of students to demonstrate that, right? Um, so the machine that you already have, and what about that machine? You know, what needs to be special about it? Um, it needs to be in good working order, right? You need to make sure that it has been cleaned out, that it has been oiled. If it has not been for service in a while, um, that would not be a bad idea to get your machine in for service if it has been a year or longer, right? Um, so it needs to be in good working order. You need to be able to maintain it at home once it's been uh, worked on by a service professional. Um, and beyond that, I recommend making sure that you set your machine up in a space where you have space behind your machine and you have space to the left of your machine, okay? You don't need to have a bunch of room, um, you know, an unreasonable amount of room. This could be like you're at the dining room table and you set up down at a corner, right? So you have the width of the table across and you have the length of the table down. Uh, but even with that, I'll actually, I'll scoot back a little bit and see if I can show you all this. I am sitting at my incredible arrow sewing cabinet. This is uh, the Kangaroo and Joey unit. I'm so thankful for Arrow that sponsored all of our classroom furniture. Um, but what I find really interesting to demonstrate right now is if I tilt this down, you'll notice that my machine is actually not flush down in the table right now. Um, normally, if possible, I would recommend having your machine flush down in the table, right? Because it's going to make it a little bit easier to make sure you're sitting at the proper place in, uh, in position with your sewing machine. Um, but in this particular instance, my cutout hasn't come in to actually fill in around my Bernina yet. And so um, I've just been using it up on the table and it's reminded me um, that having a fancy sewing cabinet, though I love mine, don't get me wrong, um, is not ultimately the key thing, right? Having table space behind you and to the left is the key thing. So the sewing machine you already have, because I want you to just dive in and start learning free motion quilting. I don't want you to have that anxiety of I've made this big investment and I better like this, right? I want you to be able to find out, do I like free motion quilting? Uh, that sewing machine needs to be in good working order. So if it has not been recently serviced by a professional, I recommend getting that done. Um, and then I recommend maintaining good home care habits with cleaning out your bobbin race regularly and oiling your machine. Um, and finally position that machine so that you have space behind your machine and to the left of your machine so that as you are working with a big old quilt, your body is not holding the weight of that. We want the table to be holding the weight of the machine as often as possible, all right? Really simple, easy peasy lemon squeezy. I know that some of y'all are here with me live. What questions can I answer for you um, that you may, may have prompted you to show up today and be like, I really am curious about free motion quilting. I really am curious about learning how to uh, work on my own machines but I have this big hesitation or work on my own quilts. But I have this big hesitation around machines. Are there any questions that I can answer for you? While y'all are typing, I'm going to take a sip of coffee and I'm going to, I'm going to scroll through my own blog one more time and make sure that I have not missed anything of the things that we either don't have to worry about or do need to worry about. Oh, here's an interesting thing. Um, you know, if you're going to be working on, you know, you know, your home sewing machine, which I recommend for learning again, because that, you know, less barrier to entry, um, do make sure that you get a hopping foot that suits your machine. Um, there's three different types of shank, high, low, and slant. If I remember correctly, most over the, like off the shelf machines are low shank machines. So you can probably find a fairly universal foot. Um, high shank machines, slant mach shank machines can be a little bit trickier, but if you do happen to have a machine that you purchased from a dealer, your dealer should be able to help you pick out a free motion quilting foot. Um, hi, Margo. Hello, Christine. Hi, Tammy. Margo says, Margo from NC, I'm checking in to say, welcome to the best FMQ class ever. You'll not be disappointed. I use my domestic machine, a Janome 9400 QPC. I love that, Margo. Margo makes a lot of quilts. She's very prolific. I need to reposition my chair, y'all. I'm about to go sliding right off. I love that. Thank you, Margo. Christine said, I had to get my machine serviced during the last cohort. Yes. Um, so one of the things that's really important about having your machine serviced is that um, sewing and quilting in general create lint, right? Um, your thread is passing through tension discs and things. Even more than that, your fabric and your batting are raking up against your feed dogs or against kind of the gaps in your needle plate. 
And so lint gets created, right? And if your machine has not been recently serviced, you're already starting with a potential backlog of lint down in the machine. And it can cause tension issues. It can cause timing issues. Um, so as often as possible, I love to recommend, like, get that machine serviced before you get going. And if not, in Christine's case, she was able to get it serviced partway through. Um, and then was all smooth sailing from there, Christine? I believe it was. But you'll have to refresh my memory. I remember you getting it serviced. Great note, great note. The tension, yes, the tension is so vital. And having that properly serviced machine is everything. Tammy says, I have everything I need, but I can't seem to get started. I have a Husqvarna Viking Topaz Designer 40. Have used it for making masks and alterations. So I'm going to do one of my favorite things, Tammy, and I am going to Google your machine. Because I am not familiar with this one. I'm quite certain it will work brilliantly. I just want to see it. Topaz Designer. Love it. What is the, What is your biggest roadblock? Tammy, that's, I'm curious about that as well. This looks like a great machine. That's a beauty. What a lovely machine. Oh, it's fabulous. Absolutely. I think, Tammy, and we'll talk about this quite a bit over the next two weeks, that one of the biggest roadblocks that's not... Um, equipment oriented, right? With free motion quilting is that it's not super often as adults that we are straight beginners at something. And I don't know if you happen to follow me on Instagram, but I put a post up about this yesterday. Um, and I was doing some reflecting on kind of my early twenties and some of the decisions that I made in my early twenties and, uh, some of the like domino effect of that through my life. Right. And that some of those things I'm like, I don't I don't know if I would do that again, or or I don't I don't know if that was uh, the best decision, or I don't know if I handled that the best way, right? And and I got kind of in my head about some of those things until I I took a step back and was like, I was 22, I was a beginner grown up, so why would I expect to have everything figured out yet, right? And and I think the same is true as we start free motion quilting. It's an it's an unusual thing as an adult that we become beginners again, right? And we're kind of starting from scratch. So if it, if some of it is just the general anxiety, you are so in the right place. I'm so excited to go through um, over the next couple of weeks and tackle some of the more practical questions as well as some of the more mindset oriented questions together. Um, Margo says, I suggest cleaning your bobbin case at least every time you change your bobbin. That's how I remember. Yes, that is going to be key for maintaining good machine health through the free motion quilting journey. I agree. Christine says wood grain is still my nemesis. You need more help. Oh, Christine, we will be back around to wood grain with this new cohort in no time and we'll get you squared away. Tammy says, I really don't know. I've done samples. It seems like my presser foot is too high. Oh, that's interesting. You may be able to adjust that. Um, do you have the Husqvarna Viking foot? Like, did you get it from your dealer? Because as Christine says, you may be able to adjust it. It may also just feel very strange to actually be able to move your practice sandwich under there. And what feels high on a practice sandwich may feel a lot less high as soon as there are the seams of a quilt to add some extra bulk. Great question. So y'all, these videos that I'm going to be doing each day for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be live almost every day in the month of August because I want to give y'all all the free motion quilting support in the world. Uh, but one of my goals, especially for these next two weeks, is for these to be pretty quickie videos. So I'm going to do a quick recap of what we've covered today. I'm going to make sure that I recap what is in the caption. And then we're going to go ahead and peace out so that you can just get a little bit of information each day. And those days are going to build up on each other. All right. So today we recap for what machine do I need for free motion quilting? In all likelihood, you need the machine that you already have. I don't believe in going out and buying a brand new machine for the purpose of learning free motion quilting, unless there is a very specific reason to do so. Um, it's that has almost never happened with my students that they need to go buy a new machine in order to learn this um, because I don't want to raise the stakes that high on your learning journey, right? I want you to be able to experiment and play with what you already have and discover for yourself is free motion quilting something that you love and that you're passionate about and that you are eager to jump in with 
and quilt your own quilts. Um, as you are preparing your machine to learn free motion quilting, it is important to make sure it is cleaned and oiled. And if it has not been serviced, make sure it's serviced. Um, and then position it on a table where you have lots of space behind the machine and lots of space to the left of the machine. Because we want, uh, the mach we want the table to be holding the weight of the quilt as we are working. Andrea, great to see you. Now, just another uh, little reminder, down in the caption of this video, you're gonna see two links. The first link is a to a blog that reviews this information that we have gone through today. If you are someone who likes to read and digest that way, or if you just want to be able to refer back to this information, that will be an easy way to do so. The second link is an invite to a free event, the Free Motion Quilting Quilting Plan Challenge that is coming at the end of, not even the end of this month, the middle of this month. I believe we start on the 15th, uh, two weeks from today. And this challenge answers the question, what the heck do I quilt where? All right, so while we're going to be going through some of the nuts and bolts of like what supplies do I need and how do I go through these processes of gathering those supplies and basting my quilt and adjusting my tension, by the time we get to the quilting plan challenge, we're going to be talking about specific quilts, including quilts you've made and how we would quilt them and what motifs we would put where and how we would go about actually taking that from a flimsy to a finished quilt. And then, of course, at the end of this month, we will be enrolling the 10th cohort of Free Motion Quilting Academy, which is so exciting. So Rockstars, thank you for joining me for this very first day of the 12 days of FMQ FAQ. I will be back here, same time, same place tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern right here on YouTube. All of these videos will be available for watch on replay and we'll have a new resource for you each day. While you wait for tomorrow, make sure you go sign up for that free quilting plan challenge because I want to make sure we get to hang out all month long. Bye for now.